Here's the machine sitting on a box that I've made for it with a couple of drawers to store parts and the electronics. And here's an example of a platter which has been laser engraved using a spirograph method. The basis of the machine is the rocking headstock. This sits on two pillow bearings bought from Banggood, a Chinese website, for about £12. The black U-frame that supports the main shaft and bearing came from an old bed and I thought would make a good basis for a ornamental lathe. The green uh, bars are the sides of the bed cut in two into two strips and the black cross member is also part of the mattress support. Cheap, eh? The main shaft is made from a brass tube that was given to me by a friend who had brass balustrades on his 1960s house. So I've got about 20 of these brass tubes. On the end, it has a brass insert which has been silver soldered into it and machine to take a thread for the chuck. On the other end there is another brass insert which has a small uh, six millimeter thread cut into it for retaining the rosette barrel. Next comes the one of the clutch plate mechanisms. This is a 3D printed um, disc with a collar which is secured to the shaft by grub screws and there's also a spring there which pushes the clutch plates apart. The bearings for the main shaft are mounted in wooden blocks which are adjustable to make sure they go to the right height. This is the left hand bearing and this is the right hand bearing. In front of the right bearing you see a rather odd shaped wooden block that's the brake which is tightened down when I'm doing phase work. It holds the brass shaft in place. And here in the middle is a uh, 3D printed spirograph attachment as described by Pat Miller on his videos. The toolbar is two more bits of brass tube which are embedded into wooden blocks and on top of these sit the tool carriers which are printed on a 3D printer and slide up and down. The main rosa rubber is a small bearing mounted in a piece of old angle poise lamp and the biograph bearing is um, also mounted in a piece of old angle poise lamp. You can see the spirograph at work in my other video. At the tailstock end, uh, where the cutters are mounted, we have a cheap compound table from Banggood that costs about £27. The, um, the, the XY mechanism, it's got a big X mechanism, but a fairly short Y mechanism, so I have um, mounted the whole table on a, two runners with a lead screw that can move it up and down quite simply, which gives me a much greater range of movement. These, this mechanism, again available from Banggood at a cost of, I think, around about £11. The lathe is mounted on a rather crude wooden um, chest that I've made up out of old oak flooring boards. And the electronics are mounted in the right hand drawer. There are three power supplies, two old computer power supplies, 
to drive uh, the low voltage um, electronics and the central power supply is a rather beefier 48 volt power supply to drive the cutter. That cost about £35. The electronics themselves are mounted in um, a plastic box. Inside this there is an Arduino with a LCD keypad shield and the keypad has been wired to external buttons for ease. This is the same setup as described by Gary Liming on his videos and his website at Snailworks. Really, really useful piece of kit. On the end we have the main stepper motor which is mounted on a brass bar which allows me to alter the tension. So the brass bar moves up and down. The belt will fit over the rosette barrel which I'll have in place in a minute and I can use this screw here to tighten the tension on the belt. The in order not for the belt tension to remain the same, the drive on the stepper motor is mounted on exactly the same axis as the uh, base of the rocking um, headstock. This is the rosette barrel. These rosettes are 3D printed on a 3D printer, uh, differing colours because I'm experimenting with differing colours of 3D filament. On the front of that there are some grippy sponge rubber to engage with the clutch plate on the other side of the setup here. The rosette barrel simply slides on the, onto the shaft and is held in place by a piece of stainless steel tube and a threaded 3D printed um, gnarled nut which I tighten up and as I tighten it up it forces the rosette barrel against the clutch plate and that's how the friction drives the setup. It takes a bit of time because there's lots and lots of thread but you, I think you can see it closing up now. And when it's sufficiently tight, you can see that it drives the whole assembly. There we go, nice and tight. For phase work, I simply tightened up the brake on the main shaft nice and tight and then loosen the thread on the other end and the spring pushes the clutch plates apart and now the rosette can move independently of the main shaft and using the stepper motor controls I can adjust that by degrees or steps. So I can divide a circle into as many bits as I want and move one portion at a time or more. Again, look at Gary's web, Gary Liming's website. He'll show you how to do it. It's also some information on my other videos. Here we have the belt mechanism in place. And I'm going to tighten up the tension to the point where it will drive. Making up the belts is a bit of a pain because it's very difficult to get belts precisely the right size. So I have to get G2 timing belt and join it, which can be a little tricky, but on the whole I think I've found a method that works.
Here's the machine with the cutter motor mounted. It's a very simple mount. The coach bolt slides into the T, T slots on the compound table and I can move the motor to and fro and sideways and then tighten it up at precisely the, uh, at the position that I want it. Turn it on. And it doesn't work because the power is not connected. There we go. This motor will run up to 3000 RPM, which in my experience is pretty much all you need and is infinitely controllable to whatever speed you like. Here's the laser engraver mounted on the compound table. The engraver is mounted on top of a small box which contains all the electronics which turns it on and off and allows me to put it on high power or low power. And the compound table and the black box sits on a little laboratory rise, rising table which allows me to adjust the height very precisely which is important for accuracy. Very simple, very cheap, about £20 I think that table cost me. And here you see the machine in action with the rubber being driven, with the rosette being driven over the rubber by the stepper motor. Stepper motor can go at several different speeds. This is medium speed. This is a high speed, which is in my experience too high for the cutter. And this is low speed, which works well on, on some designs. My next video, I hope to show you some of the designs that you can cut with this very simple, very cheap Rose engine. Quite a lot of man hours in building it, but because this is my second Rose engine, a lot quicker than the first. Hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Thanks for watching.